life. <laughs>
Nigerian Institute of Soil Science Government Council. And uh, Professor Victor Ochude he is the registrar of Nigeria Institute of Soil Science. So you're welcome. We have Dr. Engineer Tundebelo, the director of Farm Input Support Services at MAD. Thank you for coming. We have Dr. Badr Singh, the managing director in the Roma and Lima Fertilizer and Chemical Limited. Professor Darba Shalubutu, Executive Secretary at the Cultural Research Council of Nigeria, but is represented by Dr. Mrs. Nemeka Ihewagu. Dr. Kabiru Ibrahim is the President of Farmers Association of Nigeria. And Dr. Adepola, Adepola, Miss Council Member representing Federal Minister of Environment, West African Fertilizer Association. And this month, we told him, Special Assistant Media to the Senior Special Advisor to the President of the SDG. So you are welcome. The Director General of the National Agency for Great Green World on his way, Thomas Etu, President, Fertilizer Producers and Suppliers Association of Nigeria. Mr. Caleb Uso, Country Director and Deputy Managing Director, OCP Africa. The Director of Agriculture Extension, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Land Development. We have Director of the Department of Veterinary Services, FMARCH. Director of Planning, Policy and Coordination, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Land Development. Director of Procurement, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Director of General Services, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. We still have the Director of Reform Coordination, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Dr. Abdulazak Garba, Director General, Nigeria Geological Survey Agency. And Dr. K. Inde, Mark Inde, Country Rep, Alliance for a Green Revolution. Dr. We still have the Director of Reform Coordination, Federal Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. Dr. Abdulazak Garba, Director General, Nigeria Geological Survey Agency. And Dr. K. Inde, Mark Inde, Country Rep, Alliance for a Green Revolution. Dr. A very important item. We want to give this opportunity to the Vice uh, Chairman of Council of Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, Professor G. I see Waka to please welcome us all to this great occasion. Mr. Chairman. The Honorable Minister of Agriculture, distinguished members of the Council of Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, the Deputy Chief Executive Officer, the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIS, Directors of the Federal and the State Ministries. The FAO country representative, representatives of government and non governmental organizations, distinguished scholars and guest speakers, fellows, registered soil scientists, members of Soil Science Society of Nigeria, associates of NIS, staff of the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, men and women of the press, ladies and gentlemen. I salute you, and you are all welcome. I am particularly happy to be in your midst today in this crucial celebration of the World Soil Day. It is not news that a pattern role 
It is not news. The important role soil, soil is played to human civilization, development and advancement from food production, environmental interface to sustenance of life on Earth. In view of this importance, the International Union of Soil Science, IUSS, in 2002, made a resolution proposing the 5th of December to be a World Soil Day in order to celebrate the importance of soil as the crucial component of the natural system and as a vital contributor to human well-being. The day also seeks to raise awareness about the enormous role soils play in the achievement of food and uh, environmental security, as well as uh, prevailing, as well as providing excellent opportunity to engage the general public and target government, education, educational and um, academic workers, farmers, the private sector, and the civil society in general. Ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to mark this year's World Soil Day. Tags keep soil alive, protect our soil diversity, and it seeks to raise awareness on the importance of sustaining healthy environment, healthy ecosystems, and human well-being by addressing the increasing challenges of soil biodiversity loss, biodiversity loss, and raise the profile of healthy soil, healthy soil by encouraging governments, organizations, communities, and individuals around the world to engage in promoting, uh, in, uh, 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 engage in productive improvement and sustainability of soil health. At this juncture, may I emphasize that for the development of, for the development and advancement of Nigeria soils and soil resources, the Nigeria Institute of, of uh, Soil Science, NIS, is primarily charged with the responsibility of regulating the, uh, the profession of soil science in Nigeria. To that effect, NIS prescribes and regulates the standards of academic qualification and practices and um, practical skills to the to be attained by persons seeking to be registered soil scientists, associates and fellows of the Institute of Soil Science. NIST is also charged with the following responsibilities. To regulate the practice of the profession for soil science, for soil scientists, to establish, to establish, update, and um, maintain, register. I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. To regulate the practice of the profession of soil scientists to establish, update, and maintain a register of soil practitioners under this act, according to their various ranks, and to regulate the prerogatives and privileges pertaining to those ranks. To ensure that soil science practitioners in Nigeria uphold the ethics of profession and guarantee the
the sustainability of high quality soil. To advance the education, science, technology, and art of soil science and crop production in collaboration with zonal coordinating research institutes. To promote soil quality management, to promote rapid sustainability of high quality and through scientific methods and regulate the issues pertaining to soil management in Nigeria. To advise and encourage the enactment and the enforcement of laws that will guarantee efficient production and consistent supply of high quality food in, to Nigerians. To educate, and, uh, to educate the public on soil science activities and, co and, co and cooperate or affiliate with many relevant associations and soil science bodies, either locally or internationally. Congress in soil conservation. Today we are gathered, today we look theoretically and practically into the life career of our soils. The living part of our mother soil. We will look closely into the biodiversity that exists in our soil system. We will look, we will talk about the quiet workers of nature that over centuries have contributed to build, reclaim, nourish, and keep our soils usable and alive, without which we will be doomed. It is clear that soil biodiversity has been degraded. What do I mean by soil biodiversity? These are micro, meso, micro, fauna, and flora that exist and interact in the soil system. This de degradation means decline in food production, decline in greenhouse gas sequestration, retention of heavy metals in the soil, poor environmental health, and increase in societal unrest. Since limited food is projected to be produced with, with the foregoing trend in soil biota global degradation, and Nigeria is in a red list. People, there is an immediate danger. The question here is, what can we do to bring solutions to our planet? What is Nigeria going to do in this regard? It is on this note that I open this expert dialogue session to let our scientists, researchers, academicians, policy and industry experts to present the way forward so we can achieve the anticipated food increase, safe and productive environment, quality soils, quality human animal health with decline in chemical related injection through contamination from farm produce and natural resource exploitation. Finally, I urge everyone here present to stick to experts recommendations, conclusions, and look inward to contribute positively towards the regeneration of our <coughs> soil biodiversity. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to thrill you with the understanding of the word soil the word soil. S stands for source, sustainer of life. O stands for orig origin, organizer of life. I stands for incubator, invigorator, initiator of life. L stands for living base, liveliness, livelihood, longevity. Thus, our soils yearn for protection and sustainable management. Please save our soils. Finally, 
Therefore, in order to understand the extent and nature of biodiversity, there is an urgent need to study our soils in details based on agroecological zones. I hereby call on the people and governments of Nigeria, when I mean governments, federal government, state government, local government, to empower this to immediately embark on a very detailed soil survey of Nigeria. This exercise is long overdue. This exercise is long overdue. Once again, you are welcome to this great soil celebration event. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Your Excellency, the Honorable Minister. May I stand on all existing protocols. And thank you very much for the invite that was extended to my boss, the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals, Princess Ade Joke Orelope Ade Fulire, who had expressed interest to be here today, but had to represent Mr. President at a different function today. So she sends a warm regards. I will just go straight to deliver the statement. That I am delighted to be here with you today on this occasion of the World Soil Day. A day dedicated to highlight and emphasize the need to continually promote good human activities that provide a healthy soil composition for a more productive use. As we all know, some of these, some of the very important rules of the soil in the ecosystem includes the growing of trees that shade sun rays that deplete the ozone layer and supplies fresh air for the cleaner environment and especially for the production of quality food for human consumption. Some of the priority targets of the Sustainable Development Goals are in Goal 15, which seeks to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystem. Goal 13, which hinges on taking the right actions against climate change, and Goal 2, which focuses on ending hunger, achieve food security, improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. It is safe to say here, therefore, that only a well-nourished individual is, to a large extent, guaranteed to live in good health and well-being, which is also envisaged in Goal 13, I mean Goal 3, of the SDGs. That is, soy has a very special place in the attainment of the Sustainable Development Goals. <coughs> it is therefore pertinent to note that without a healthy soil, it will be nearly impossible to attain food security, which would guarantee adequate food supply for human consumption, thereby ending hunger make afforestation and tree planting efforts a success for the needed gain. Just as this year's event has been tagged, keep soil alive, protect soil diversity, biodiversity, it is yet another wake up call for us to work together to develop ideas that will ensure that our soil are healthy. As the world enters the decade of action on SDGs, it rests on our shoulders collectively not to be left behind in engaging proactive measures that will help us sustain and improve our soil health. The President, President Muhammad Oboire, has led administration remains committed to the actualization of the Sustainable Development Goals in Nigeria by 2030. 
and our doors at the Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Sustainable Development Goals is widely open for continual partnership and are for that aim at robustly delivering the SDGs to all Nigerians as governments, as a government, without leaving anyone behind. That is the commitment of the government. Once again, I want to say a very big thank you for the invitation that I was extended to my office. I felicitate with you on this special day and wish you a fruitful deliberation. Thank you very much. Summer depends on three important media to produce crops, namely soil, seed, and moisture. Even though advancement in science and technology has made it possible to produce vegetables in soilless media, the farmers in Nigeria solely depends on healthy soil to upscale agricultural productivities. Afan is full in support of celebrating this world soil day and protection of the soil against up land use change pollutions unsustainable management practices and in the form of education that will affect crops Cross field and food safety. We supported the passage of the of soil science in science bill to optimize the efficacy of the soil in order to upscale food production that will lead to the attainment of food security in Nigeria. Happy World Soil Day. Happy celebration, and we thank you all, and we continue to support the, the, the soil science and everything that is happening without soil, there will be no quality food in Nigeria. And I will continue to support you people in issue of making sure that every all over the country you people go around to do the soil test. I was in a state, they told me of what you have done in some places. So I wish every, all the local government, all the nook and corner of this country, because farmers is suffering. And I thank you for inviting us on this occasion. Thank you all. Welcome. When it comes to Africa, I came nearly seven years back to Africa. And I admire Africa that still we have uh, less pollution here. Still our soils are uh, manageable. If you go across Asia, Europe, they have destroyed everything. So now still you are blessed by the God or blessed by Almighty that you have still manageable lands, manageable resources. Even the people as well not much polluted. You give something, they will be happy. So that's uh, something and uh, when it comes to Africa, Africa is the continent of future. You know, most of the investment, most of the uh, brain, they are coming to Africa. They are going to invest in Africa and I will say that Nigeria is the most blessed in Africa. You see from uh, a sea to a sub-Saharan Africa to desert, you have everything. Whatever you want to produce, you can produce from potato, apple, to wheat, maize, rice, anything. So that's this much long horizon of soil and geography and the talented people and resources and the groundwater availability. So it's a goose and uh, if we continue to develop in next five, six years, it may be that Nigeria across the Brazil economy as it becomes a much bigger country when it comes to the Africa. So, I will show you one of our uh, documentary that what we are doing in Nigeria. We are uh, Indorama fertilizers and for your proud moment, 
we are the world's largest single line urea manufacturer. Even Nigeria, no one can compare Europe, America, anyone. So Nigeria means world's largest urea manufacturer. We are not supplying locally, we are exporting. In 2021 April, we are coming with the second line. It means Nigeria will produce 3 million tons of urea that will export to Latin America, Europe and all. And so we have good that Nigerian products are the world's best products. So even the European and American cannot compete with your products. Even in case of ginger, you have the best of the world. So so many things I can, I don't want to take too much time. But what I said earlier that Africa is still has the huge potential to explore and go for local. Even your rice, whatever you consume, consume local as well. Thank you so much and watch our documentary. Thank you. The second line that will keep our capacity to almost like 3 million tons by 2021. This is one of the largest investments in the downstream sector in Nigeria, and especially focusing on fertilizer. Now, we take Nigerian agricultural status into a different zone. And its few years venturing into the Nigerian market in the realm of fertilizers has made giant strides towards impacting the country's agricultural sector through business development and agronomy. Through aggressive farmer training and educational activities, staff training, conferences and field demonstrations, Indorama has improved the lives of more than 12,000 farmers with projections to reach over 200,000 farmers by the end of 2017 and up to 2.5 million farmers by the end of 2022. Uh, what we do in Indorama as agronomists, we go to fields, we meet farmers in the fields, we go to research institute, ADPs, that is agricultural development project. Like we have gone to McCarthy local government in Kaduna State, Ikara. We have gone to Soba local government. We organize field days also. In this, we distribute our numbers. We sanitize them on base agronomic practices and base management on different crops. <laughs> Saboda haka na noma shi na ji dadi yanta ya kamata. Yauwa saboda haka na yi buhu 17 bara to bana samu sai ne kai buhu 30 na taki Indrama. Indrama mun ji dadi shi yanta ya kamata. Indrama Fertilizers has also deployed specialists to conduct extensive soil sampling throughout Nigeria, generating over 1000 soil samples in 2017 alone. We emphasize on farmers to do soil tests. So when we give them our numbers, they used to call us for us to come and test their soil and ascertain the fertility content of their soil. The information gathered through this research initiative continues to be broadcasted comprehensively through radio talk shows. 50 talk shows have been projected for the year 2017 alone. Indorama is affiliated with several international development partners and TV media companies, including Africa Fertilizer and Agribusiness Partnership, AFAD, International Fertilizer Development Center, IFDC, Procom, Macarifi, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, International Plants Nutrition Institutes, and several others. Indorama works with these international development partners to educate and train African farmers and popularize agronomy and developmental activities at local and international level. Indorama is an international organization and then they specialize on fertilizer, especially urea and some other granular fertilizer. So when they came into Nigeria, uh, and they have been in Nigeria for a very long time, and because of our own importance in the rice production in Nigeria, and the rice requires a lot of fertilizer, and they felt that, okay, coming in collaboration with us, we enable farmers to have access to their own fertilizer, especially the urea, which is required by the farmers. Firewall 24 broadcast in the realm of fertilizers agronomy and farmer training initiatives in breakfast shows in sub-Saharan Africa. Indorama produces and distributes comprehensive promotional and training materials to intimate the Nigerian public on important agricultural information and what they stand to gain from patronizing their products and services. Indorama granular urea fertilizer is the best in the market all over the globe. It has a low purity and moisture content, a higher crushing strength than any of its competitors, as well as low iron content and uniform granular size, 
that is ammonia-free. Indoramas fertilizer plants in Port Harcourt, Nigeria, produces 1.5 million metric tons of urea fertilizer. Apart from supplying urea to farmers throughout Nigeria, the company also supplies urea to blending plants across the country to produce MPK fertilizers in line with the federal government's presidential fertilizer initiative. We are playing a substantial role in presidential's initiative in fertilizer, where we have agreed and signed an amendment of understanding with the federal government to supply urea at very competitive price, um, and that, in fact, lower than the international price. That we think as a, uh, it's our role. To, to play as a corporate citizen, uh, as a part of the growth strategy which the federal government has laid uh, for the growth of agriculture in the country. The Presidential Fertilizer Initiative was actually a brainchild of the federal government to be able to capacitate our local blenders, to be able to make fertilizer available and affordable to farmers. In all of this, at the end of the day, the beneficiary is the farmer and the country at large. Our food security has now been improved. Farmers' income has been improved because we now have more production. And already, with a water sample now, the import, our import bill has also reduced drastically. All in all, we want to specifically state that Indorama has actually played a very vital role in our actual development since they came in uh, about a year ago. And uh, one other very area that is very critical is their farmer support. You know, working with farmers, sensitizing them on the need to use fertilizer. Because at the end of the day, when you create the use of fertilizer, it's going to have a direct effect on your productivity. First thing, we are making the urea available all across. And the surplus quantity of Indorama urea we are exporting to other countries so that we are also bringing the foreign exchange in the country. So on the both way, Improving the uh, this crop production in the Nigeria by supplying huge quantity of the fertilizer in the country and exporting to other countries to bring the foreign exchange in the country. So Indorama is helping a lot to boost the Nigerian economy. Indorama fertilizer will ensure the future of Nigerians for years to come through the growth and development of the nation's agricultural sector. The future of Nigeria is agriculture. The future of agriculture is in the world. Nigeria, ARC and Abuja are the 2020 World Soil Day celebration by the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science on 5th December 2020 with the team Keep Soil Alive, Protect Soil Biodiversity. The Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria ARCN is gratified to be invited to this occasion of the 2020 World Soil Day celebration by the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science, NISS, holding at the Nigerian Merit House, Aguiron C Street, Metama, Abuja, today, December 5, 2022. The mandate of the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria aligns with the objectives of the Green Alternative, the Agricultural Promotion Policy 2016-20 of the Administration of the President Muhammad Buhari GCFR, which aims to promote agribusiness in Nigeria and contribute to the achievement of the SDGs. The SDG, right, uh, SSC SDG has mentioned all the SDGs that the Minister is interested in. The president is interested in. To mention a few, poverty eradication, ending hunger, climate action, life on land, etc. The mandate of the research, Agricultural Research Council is enshrined in the following and is anchored on the following as I list, list them. Achieving significant improvements in agricultural productivity, marketing and competitiveness by generating appropriate research technologies and policy options, promoting innovation, establishing a knowledge management capacity, and strengthening the national agricultural research system. The Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria also has a strategic plan that spans 2011 to 2020 and has 
an, an ongoing reform bill at the National Assembly, all aimed at strengthening the delivery capacity of the Nigerian Agricultural Research Institute, NARIS, to support a competitive and vibrant agricultural sector driven by research, innovation, and global best practices. The theme of the 2020 World Soil Day celebration, Keep Soil Alive, Protect Soil Biodiversity, is apt and has a linkage with the research and innovation outputs of the Agricultural Research Council of Nigerian System. I mean, her research institutes, her federal colleges of agriculture, and the universities of agriculture. We all know that soil health, conserved biodiversity, and working with ecological processes can help maintain a balanced ecosystem function. Hence, research is important. The ARC, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, has made some inputs and has a lot of impacts. Some of them are our research scientists have developed technology options, information, and methods or processes that enhances the productivity and stability of the ecosystem. For example, some of our researches have been carried out into farming systems by all the ecological zones in Nigeria. The research, some, of, some other research impacts made have been in the pro development of technologies of bringing up drought resistant varieties, early or medium maturing varieties, disease resistant varieties, soil improvement technologies to mention but a few. ARCN has also lent her voice globally in raising awareness like you're doing today on the importance of a sustainable natural resource management when she celebrated World Soil Day on the December 5th, 2016 with a road walk like you are doing today, publication of flyers and banners, as well as symposium and seminar with her stakeholders. The Soil Science Society of Nigeria was included in that pro uh, program. So today's event by National Institute of Soil Science will also, in no small way, engrave Nigeria on the global map of nations taking steps in keeping the soil alive and protecting biodiversity. Today is expected also to contribute in any way for a possible theoretical concept to formulate soil sustainable policy options for the nation, especially now that we are moving from an oil economy to an agro-economy. ARCM is ready, therefore, to make available to your advantage the varieties of expertise domiciled in the agricultural research system, especially in the area of soil management research. On this note, the Agricultural Research Council of Nigeria, on behalf of the Nigerian Agricultural Research System, the NAS, salutes the foresight of the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science, NISS, in contributing to raising awareness on the importance of sustaining healthy ecosystem and human well-being, despite the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. The Executive Secretary, Professor... Well, and I want to stand on the existing protocol. Like my friend said, protocol is a very important part of our life in Nigeria. And if you haven't mastered how to do it correctly, you are better off standing on existing ones before you dig a pit for yourself. So I prefer to stand on the existing protocol. I want to, on behalf of the West African Fertilizer Association, um, which is a body of all private sector operatives in the fertilizer sector across West Africa, um, to congratulate the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science, uh, the board, and the management under the leadership, the a very able leadership of um, the registrar and CEO, Professor Chude. Professor Chude is someone that we all know in the world of soil as a pillar, it's not just in Nigeria, it's globally known. 
to the global leaders. We like we salute the great work that you are doing. For. We salute the great work that you are doing. Um, been in Nigeria and I haven't been based in Nigeria for a very long time. I can I, I know a little bit about the background before the emergence of the Nigerian Institute of Soil Science. I know there was a lot of work that went under the scene, and uh, it was uh, a very demanding road. Soil is basically the reservoir of life. Everything, you know, the food chain begins with the soil. The plants that we all eat depend on the soil, and they pass it to animals, and when animals eventually die and plant themselves, they return to the soil. So the real reservoir for life, where God in his wisdom kept what is needed to make life grow, and then when that is used up in that life, is returned to that reservoir to be picked up by other cycles of life, is the soil. So to, to treat the soil with carelessness is to risk the existence of life. So it's extremely important, and it was a very good uh, vision for the, uh, for the International Association of Soil Sciences to have come together and pick the 5th of December as a, as a day to celebrate the soil every year, to bring our attention back to how important it is to keep an eye on where our life actually came from and where the reservoir of life is, where we must keep an eye on if we want life to continue to exist on this planet. So thank you so much for picking this date. Uh, one of the lessons I'm taking away is that I'm going to promote it across the entire uh, West Africa. We don't want only Nigeria to be celebrating. Hopefully, uh, in, a, in, in the no distant future, we will actually be having a West Africa level celebration where Nigeria will be represented as we celebrate the size in West Africa. This is extremely important because when you look at the whole globe, the whole of the world today, everybody is looking back at Africa, not just Africa, West Africa specifically, because this is where we have the greatest remaining potential to use the soil to sustain life. This is where we have the greatest remaining potential. So to be in that prime position, we must guide it very jealously. We must not allow ourselves to be pushed to where other parts of the world have gotten into, like, like my friend Bobby said earlier on, in terms of overstretching the soil, over polluting the soil, being reckless with the, with the intention of maximizing output to the extent where the stability of the soil is not being considered. This is why in WAFA, the West African Fertilizer Association, where we think, when you hear fertilizer, we're not just talking about only inorganic. We're talking about a balance of all of the things that need to come into the soil to ensure that the soil does not just produce, it's not, just, it's not to produce maximally, it's to produce optimally such that it's able to sustain life for as long as you know, God allows the planet Earth to exist. That is extremely important. So uh, I'd like to again congratulate Nice, congratulate Nigeria, congratulate the entire system, and to let's keep the the flag fly, flying. I, I promise you that WAFA supported, we didn't support much this year, but in subsequent years, we definitely should be able to support. We, we definitely should be able to support. If we begin our planning and start in advance, we will be able to support. Um, WAFA has many people like Indurama in it. We have over 60 companies like Indurama across, across West Africa. WAFA members produce more than 95% of all the fertilizers that are used across West Africa. So WAFA is really a strong partner and working with Rafa means we can go uh, a long mile. So thank you one more time for the privilege of being here. And uh, please keep the good flag flying. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Um, the chairman of the occasion, the DG of uh, National Institute of Soil Science, DES of Agricultural ARCN, ably represented all other protocol observed. Um, I am mandated by the Honorable Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Alad Mohamed Sabunanunu, to deliver the opening remarks. He is on on um, on uh, avoidably absent due to exigencies of uh, duty. I am Engineer Shehu Tijanibedu, the Director of Agricultural Land and Climate Management uh, Services. I will be delivering the 
opening remarks, although I'm the one saying it, but there is what. The team of the World Soil Day keeps soil alive, protects soil biodiversity, is up. And is important for the sustainability of agricultural practices and achievement of food security. Without soil, you cannot have plant. Without plant, we cannot have food. Without food, we cannot have human existence. Our agricultural practices, especially, especially the tillage operations, and not other farming practices, has effect on what happens to our soil or diversity. And I hope the expert dialogue, dialogue will uh, come up with practical solutions to how we can maintain our soil or diversity while at the same time achieving food security and sustainable uh, agriculture. Um, as a ministry, I have approved that soil testing and soil, soil survey and soil testing should, as a matter of routine, be carried out almost, I can say, annually, so that farmers will be comfortable to test their soil at, each, at the end of each farming uh, season, meaning that um, soil sampling and testing can actually be achieved even when it is uh, this decentralized. That is, the expert dialogue should come up with practical measures that will make farmers to be able to approve, approach our soil testing labs to test their soil for them to be able to know the type of input of fertilizers they will need for their soil to do their planting so, that, so as to maximize the so as to, to maximize the, the input they will require for their farming. Uh, without taking much of your time uh, knowing that we start to hear more from the experts and we try, start to gain more from what they are saying but I must also add that we should also be able to educate the essential officers on soil uh, the, on soil, uh, what was what the best practice in soil fertility management, so that as they advise the farmers on inputs, they should also uh, they advise the farmer on soil input and agro good agro agronomic practices. They should also be able to advise the farmers on how they can maintain their soil. I now have the singular honor and privilege of declaring open this expert dialogue as part of World Soil Day celebration. Thank you very much.
Yes, my dad. Welcome to the party. Young man! Yes, my dad. Did you know why I sent for you? No, your majesty. We have heard of the good works you have been doing in the Gobanera community. How your ideas have caused them to produce bountifully. This is what I sent for you. Please, can you tell us about yourself? Yes. Your Majesty, my elder. My name is Francis Ayahu, Your Majesty. I am a soil scientist with the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, Your Majesty. You can also call me a soil doctor, Your Majesty. As a soil doctor, I prefer solutions facing our agricultural problems, Your Majesty. Soil doctor. But how could that be? Why is this government people treating us like this? Your Highness, you have been something about this. You know, my elders, the government does not play anti bank. Mm -hmm. What they do is that they send soil doctors like me to various places to carry out soil analysis. All these soil analysis or soil testing are there for soil testing. No, soil testing. Young soil man, testing. young man. Young man. Yes. You have spoken in words my people barely understand. Yes. But let me consult with the Council of Elders. What do you think we do? I think we have to consult the gods. My king, no, I disagree. We have to consult the eyes of the gods. There is a saying that the beauty of a female monkey is imaginary to the husband. Not my wife. Either. Everything is imaginary to us in our king. My king, something. We have the gods of the land to tell us to stand in memorial. Let's consult the eyes of the gods. He's following the cow of the cow of kingdom. Yes, 
my case. I have already been bedeviled by the words of this woman. We shall recess and convey letter in the day for further discussion. Long live the king.
People of Utah, I greet you. Hey. Hey. Your Majesty, we are celebrating because a new day has come to our land. Yes, sir. Your Majesty, as I'm talking to you right now, our produce store is filled with food. Yes, sir. No space again. Yes. And yet, there are so many food that is yet to be accepted. Yes. All oh, thanks to our soy You have tested the Yogidi, and truly you have proven to be competent. My king, I greet you. Mm -hmm. I, the eyes of the gods, has come to celebrate with the people of this land. Oh. <laughs> you know, they say you don't need a mirror to admire your bracelets. I have truly seen that our yield as a community depends on our impute and good farming practices, and not on the gods or any superstitious beliefs. Of a man, he immediately learns how to be humble. I oh, oh, accept my humble apologies. I am sorry. Yeah, baby. Please, I'm coming. Let me know in the palace. Who am I seeing? Who is this? Hey, 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 greetings, sir. No, I reject your greeting. Let me greet you. Hey, 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 now, no matter how much the Utoks are in the hall, they will always remain behind. I think there is every need for this one to remain Your Marino, I gave you my daughter, and you're here coming against me. Remember, you have not finished your bright price. Okay. You can see, you can carry her. Sit down. Sit down. No. The only thing you can talk about is your daughter you gave to a man that has been a problem to him. <laughs> Elders and people of Otaku community. Yay! No matter how the water runs from the mountain, it must surely has its end in the river. There is nothing that has no end. Not even pain or anger. Today, my anger has come to an end. I have forgiven all your offenses. But before I go further, I would like to hear from the so-called soil doctor. Um, organic manure in the agricultural land. This organic manure improves the population of the microbes in the soil. And when the microbes are in the soil, they break down this organic matter and lead to increase of nutrients in the soil. I'm no magician. That's what I just did, Your Majesty. Your Majesty, my elders, please, I've my state my welcome in this great community. Yeah. Your Majesty, my elders, the people of the Taco Kingdom, there is no cause for alarm. Anytime we have any problem with our soil, we run down to the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science. The Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NISS, is an agency of the federal government of Nigeria, under the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, served with the responsibility of regulating soil science and agriculture with the aim of improving the standard of living of everybody. The Nigeria Institute of Soil Science also encouraged the promotion and management of high quality soils. Like I said, high quality soils and also the preferred solution to soil erosion, soil pollution, which affects the food and water we drink. Nigeria Institute of Soil Science have zonal offices across the six geopolitical zones of the country. You can contact the Nigeria Institute of Soil Science at www.niss.gov.ng or info at niss.gov.ng. Also, you can call them on 0803 315 4400 or 081. 255-95117. Thank you very much. Elders and people of Utaku community. Yeah. If there was one thing I heard from this man was the Nigerian Minister of Soil Science. <laughs>
located at number eight, Ablahi Ibrahim Street, Otako, Abuja, or you can call us at 080-33-154400 or 0812-55-95-117. If soil alive, protect soil by diversity. Healthy soil for healthy living. Can we, can we keep clapping for this drama too? Can we keep clapping? Can we keep clapping? If you can dance, you are allowed. You are permitted to dance with the team. You can dance. My pets, my home, my songs and place I call my own. For all in time, to, you keep nourishing in a world ever changing, yet never romantic. For long man calls you, the prodigal son, he left you, walking this old earth to the flew. From creepy to the micros, I walk on you and kill the biodiversity. From the ocean depth to the mountain peak, my cry splashing like a rain when I speak. Oh, save mother soul, God had children from the cross. Keep soil alive, protect your biodiversity. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mother Rizzi Chukugatsi. I'm a co-member of the Nigerian Institute of Social Science. I'm here to present my point that keep soil alive, protect soil by university. You think you are better. You think it's all your value. Can you look beyond that and focus on the small, the tiniest little part of your own? Do you know the one you see worthless is worth more than the worthwhile? It's a pathetic story, yet a journey of another. We often ignore what we cannot see. And yet the microorganism beneath the soil surface plays a vital role in plant function and its ecosystem well-being. The microbes can influence plant genetic structure, its health and its interaction with other plants. I'm talking about the soil and all the biological components it possesses. It's the most important part of our lives, a law we cannot rely. I'm sorry, but no worry, it's true. Keep soil alive, but there's soil very alive. Science training where she was attached to a laboratory in Montempla in France. And on returning, she also attended a mentoring workshop in Nairobi and also a women leadership and management course at Accra. These training were organized by award, and that is the African Women in Agricultural Research and Development. She also attends several other trips. The chairman, sir, the registered Nigerian Institute of Soil Science, all invited participants to this, to the, this year's soil, um, soil expertise dialogue. Ladies and gentlemen, good day. This year's team is indeed an interesting one because it brings our mind back to the community soil and its residents, the biodiversity. As far back as 1938, Charles Keller acknowledged that life, that all life depends on soil. 
no life. There can be no life without soil and no soil without life. They've all evolved together. And then in 2020, 82 years later, soil scientists is bringing our mind again back to the, to, to the community soil and the life in it. Besides of soil, what we know as soil is for is 45% minerals, 25% water, 25% air, and 5% organic matter. Within the soil are plant roots, bacteria, fungi, algae, worms, insects, and larger animals. When these lizard residents are in the soil in the right proportion, population, the, the soil becomes healthy. And a healthy soil has an amazing water holding capacity. With an increase of 1% in organic matter, we're, we're expected to have as high as 25,000 gallons of water, available water, in an acre of soil. In a teaspoon of soil, we have billions of living organisms. And then also, within an acre of, of land, you are starting to have as much as weight of living organisms, small living organisms, those that we cannot see with our, with our naked eye, as big as uh, the weight will be compared to two cows, two big cows. The living soil and its permanent residence. Soil is a community, and we could liken it to Abuja as a community. In Abuja community, we have people as residents, of course we are part of it, made up of people working in different, having different functions. Some are medical doctors, some are teachers, some are engineers, some are, some are into administrative work. When someone is sick in Abuja community, the person gets to the doctor. Students meet the teachers. Engineers do engineering work. That is the same way the soul community operates. Within the soul community are organisms of various sizes, some of which we can see, we cannot see with our eyes. Others we can see when we concentrate. But while others, the bigger ones are very obvious that we see them moving all the time. And also within the soul community, also within the soil community, we can see the roots of a living plant. That is even a community of its own within the soil community because a lot of activities of these organisms are going on around the roots of plants. Soil function as part by soil biodiversity. These are the soil functions. <laughs> The basic one, or the primary one, is the provision of food, fiber, and fuel. We all know soil as where our food comes from. But before this food can be produced, there are other activities that would have taken place within the soil system. The next one is the carbon sequestration. That is the capturing of carbon from the atmosphere capturing and storing of carbon in the soil. When carbon is captured, it helps to regulate the climate because it traps down the greenhouse gases from the atmosphere and makes the environment cooler for us to thrive in the environment. Another function is water purification and soil Contaminant reduction. This function, this function being mentioned, of course, cannot be achieved without the work of soil biodiversity.
capacity. That's why I said the power. We may not see them, but whatever we are seeing that is happening, positive things happening in our soil, is happening because of these organisms that are silent occupants of the soil. So, like I said, the water purification and soil contamination function is carried out by these organisms. As the rain comes, water percolates through the soil particles. And they help the, the, the organisms in the soil helps in tracking the contaminants in the soil, in the water. And then, by the time the water gets to the water body, the groundwater, it becomes pure. That is why in the depths of soil, we have pure water. It's the work of the microbe, the, the soil organism, the biodiversity. Also, a lot of things are being dumped in our soil. It is these organisms that help to decontaminate those toxins, making them less harmful for our existence. The soil, of course, is a habitat for all these organisms. That's why they live and thrive, and as they are living their life, getting protection, they are providing nutrients for the plants. As they are living in the soil, they are helping in nutrient cycling, as I've mentioned. Flood regulation. This is another function carried out by the soil biodiversity. As the water comes down into the soil, because of the roots of the plants and the ecological engineers, the soil is able to percolate through the soil down into the water bodies. When these organisms are not there to do their work, when they are depleted, their work cannot be achieved. And this is what causes flooding. Because the soil environment becomes compacted to an extent, and the water cannot percolate well, but the water must find its way, so it moves to other places where it will cause havoc. The plant materials are being harvested and processed, and they are brought back to us in form of the chemicals, the capsules we take. Also, genetic resources. Some of these, for instance, the fungi, in which the age and all the things that happen in the soil could be detected from. But basically, most of these functions cannot be made possible without the biodiversity. And as a matter of fact, for any reason, any of these organisms in the soil, the biodiversity is depleted, something drastic will happen. For instance, just like in the university system, academic activities have been brought to a halt for months. Because, of, because a group of the university system is on strike. This time, if our university is not closed down, students are at home. They cannot resume work um, for their studies because a group that is responsible for the academics are at home. That is how it is in the soil system. As long as at any moment any of these biodiversity is disrupted, something drastic happens. But unfortunately, because they are not human, and they don't speak, we may not observe it. It may take a long time before we could start feeling the effect of this uh, depletion of organisms. For instance, the heat we are experiencing, loss of biodiversity, loss of organic matter, all these things are due to the disruption of these organisms in the soil. There is crisis in the soil. This crisis is caused by climate variability, man-made activities, illegal mining, construction, improper waste disposal, and of course, unwise agricultural management. And as a consequence, we have we experience soil biodiversity losses, organic water losses, organic carbon losses, soil erosion. So I compassion and sealing, pollution, acidification, and deforestation. Because of the crisis in the environment, world nations have met and have come out with 17 goals called Sustainable Development Goals. 
from Tingo, as you can see from the chart, the soil portion powered by soil biodiversity is at the middle. And then you can see there's a chain. The, the list of six goals are in chain. That tells us the link they have even within themselves. And of course, they cannot exist on their own without the soil functions powered by the soil biodiversity. The first goal is no poverty. It's asserted that by the year 2030, there will be no poverty in our nation. How do we achieve this? When over 70% of, of our livelihood, particularly in the rural environment, is dependent on the soil, rural farmers depend on the soil for their livelihood. That is the degraded soil. SDG 2 is talking about food production. That is the food security. It's expected that there will be no hunger by the year 2030. None will go to bed hungry. SDG 3 is talking about good health and well-being. Nations' quality of life is directly linked to soil quality. We've talked about these three because they are highly linked. The soil produces what we eat and is a source of livelihood. And the soil is degraded, is worn out. We're talking about life, um, we're talking about well-being good health and well-being. The soil produces over 90% of the food we consume. And human health is directly linked to the food it consumes. From the water and nutrients, it also helps in fighting diseases and pests. So these are just part of the interaction between the, the plants and some biodiversity. What then shall we do to keep soil alive and protect biodiversity? To the government, we need a national soil policy. This will be a guide on how soils can be managed sustainably. Soil federalism. to know that there is a threat 
commercialization. Just like it is in science or business. So that it will be a room for proper amplification of sustainable soil management and for soil correspondence. Thank you. For exposing and then expanding the team. Keep soil alive. Please can we be seated? is a scholar, he is a scientist and a researcher with the Nigerian, Nigeria Institute of Soil Science, NIS. He holds an MSc, a Master of Science in Soil Science, with research interests in soil physics and hydrology. He also holds a micro PhD, which obtained after a short course on climate change from the University of Ghana in Legon. He has over 50 Mike. With due regard to the uh, Honorable Minister of Agriculture, the Vice Chairman, Miss uh, Council, Registrar CEO, everybody here present, all protocol, duly observed. My name is Mwandadia. I'm presenting on approaches for mitigating factors militating against soil health and biodiversity. A theoretical concept for soil sustained policy. I work in collaboration with Bonus in Wall Agroforestry Center and Hoda in uh, Oregon State University in the United States. With the increasing frequency in the menace of environmental pollution and contamination, Constant climatic change alongside other anthropogenic factors, soil health and biodiversity has been threatened. Meanwhile, a large proportion of the biodiversity within a terrestrial ecosystem is even below ground in soils, and its functionality determines the well being of our environment. Several cases of human animal ill health, low agricultural production, including environmental degradation, has been reported globally as a trait, as a direct or indirect consequences of soil health and biodiversity loss. Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations 2016. Where are we heading to with all these threats? There have been 60% fall in global diversity of birds, mammal including soil biota, Worldwide Fund for Nature 2018. 20% of the Amazon forest has been has disappeared in the last 50 years. Uh, international go uh, governmental panel on climate change uh, reported that. Worldwide Fund for Nature uh, 2018 reported that. And I also work in a research team that also investigated that. 90% of the world's seabed have been contaminated with plastic waste alongside other contaminants. That is a far cry for sustainable development. 2000, uh, Worldwide Fund for Nature 2018. 170 the number of times global temperature has risen, IPCC 2016. Our planet is under threat. And this threat, uh, the map here shows the, the risk index that was mapped uh, by FAO, uh, sorry, by uh, World Wide Fund for Nature in 2018. Um, the threat is all over the world. It's a global problem. But Africa is not an exception. You can see Africa there, Nigeria is inclusive, and we need to do something about that. We, um, okay, we uh, looked into uh, factors that uh, can be uh, assessed so that we know the current rate of uh, soil biodiversity depletion in, 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 in the country. And, um, one of the major things we find while waiting for the PowerPoints to come up so that we can see uh, the, uh, the, the, the pictorial form of it. We uh, discovered that uh, the, the, the country has been heavily depleted of its, its, its microbial life um, due to contamination with uh, uh, chemical spills, um, military uh, operations, um, 
contamination from industrial uh, outlets and uh, also uh, climate change. Um, there is a, a train going on. I don't know when the PowerPoint come up. I will need to go back. There, there's a map here that shows one uh, the, the major threats to solve our diversity. Erosion is a major threat to solve our diversity globally. I think last year, uh, World Saudi was also centered about er er erosion. The impact of erosion in some areas cannot be reversed. If you have mass, uh, it will just be like that. There are things you do, the soil stop being living. It becomes a dead soil. And uh, the sunlight is a major source of the energy to the plant. And the plant will uh, produce um, energy and uh, the humans eat from that energy. But in the soil system also, when the plant leaves die, it decomposes into the soil and produces carbon. The microbial or the, or the microbes in the soil will get that carbon and, uh, and, and produce energy and, and, and be sustainable. The, all other feeders can feed from there. That is the, uh, the cycle. The soil aggregates is if you pick up the soil, Aggregates. It's not just something that you see uh, and you conclude, oh, this is just soil. It contains sun, silk, clay, roots of plants, microorganisms or macroorganisms, and their secretion. This forms the soil aggregate you pick on. So you may, anytime you pick on the aggregates, you know that that is a living uh, system. So that, those are the various um, um, macroorganisms that you can find in the soil. This map here, I, I, I was talking about it before the PowerPoint went up. Uh, erosion was mapped uh, to be on the increase uh, and a major uh, threat to solve our diversity development across the world. And Africa was totally covered, you can see from the map one day. And uh, this other side, we look at in, uh, uh, the one on the yellow organic carbon change. If there's change in the organic carbon in the soil, uh, there's going to be a depreciation in the, in, in, in the diversity of microorganisms that exist in that soil. And um, this other uh, map here, you can see the major traits there. Uh, you, okay, let's talk about Africa. Loss of soil biodiversity is a trait there. You also see here, um, um, uh, loss of soil biodiversity is also there. But if you look at the, uh, Europe, organic carbon change. So these are major traits that uh, affect our biological system in the soil. The global traits to soil health and, uh, and biodiversity. The map there was done by uh, um, Ori, uh, Ori C. et al. 2016. So we, we, look, uh, we modified that map from him. Um, Africa is our major concern there. You see Africa is totally, is almost covered, totally covered. And Nigeria in that map is, 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 is greatly affected. So uh, something needs to be done. Um, there are traits that have been reported globally to be on the increase in soil biodiversity depreciation. And these traits, um, uh, the representative from Indorama talks something about um, uh, uh, Asia, a, a, Asia um, a problem. Asia there is greatly affected with the uh, deforestation. Deforestation is the major cause of uh, the depreciation or the downward trend in biodiversity development in Asia. Then in, uh, let's look at Africa. Look at Africa. Africa is mostly affected with climate change. So the problem of, of Africa is that we need to tackle our climatic system. We need to get adapted to what is happening. We need to look for sustainable approach so that we can continue to exist in centuries to come. Um, uh, this uh, map here, uh, we, look, we got data from um, the work of Gora et uh, al. 2020 and uh, did, did that visualization. Honda and uh, Bonnes and me, we did that over the internet. So now, um, you look at that, uh, um, carbon is a major problem. That is to say that if the carbon content goes down, the soil microorganism goes down, sorry, not uh, micro, macro and macro and for macro, fauna and the rest. So now, um, you look at the clay content. Clay content is also an important aspect of soil fertility. So if the clay content of the soil goes down, there is a depreciation that will happen in the content of the biologicals in the soil. Then, um, aridity, aridity, uh, permit me to use this English, is a senior brother of drought. So uh, in the absence of uh, 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 water for a very long time, 
what do you think will happen to that soil? That soil may become a dead soil because this microbes leave the way you live. And um, you look at um, temperature, the rise in temperature, which, uh, which is uh, one of the major driving force in climatic change, is also a problem that affects the microbial well-being. Uh, land uh, change, soil types, and the rest was also uh, investigated. But the overall uh, explanation or the conclusion that comes from that angle is that when one of these factors, these environmental or climatic or geographical factors is influenced, is, 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 is going down, is depreciated, the soil microbes will also be depreciated. Uh, this uh, trait, uh, this um, pie chart here represents the human trait, what human has done that is causing the soil microbes to go down. What has human done? Human has been able to look to cause 1% increase in depreciation of soil microbial trees, military activities on the, on the land. But now let's look at the major traits. The major trait is industrial production and commercial services. Um, if you look at a paint industry, for an example, after producing your paint and you're having your money and you send your effluents downstream and you destroy the ecosystem, what joy does that bring? Um, now, you look at the oil sector, the oil sector has 17%, while municipal waste treatment and disposal have 15%. So what do we tackle most? We are going to look at the factors that uh, causes that industrial uh, uh, problem. Um, modeling, uh, a study was done in University of Abuja. I was fortunate to be a part of a study done by uh, Chudi et al. 2020. So we look at the soil uh, biodiversity in connection with soil compaction. Um, soil compaction was found to have a detrimental effect on the biodiversity flourishing in the soil. So we look at, among all the subsite samples, it was only about two sites, site 15 and, and site 11 that has micro Problem and we use Edward for that study. So it's a far cry if such land wants to use for agricultural uh, production. Uh, what, what, what do you expect to get from such soil? Interpolation was done so that we can find the, the, the trend that could happen in that area. Um, Honda uh, did, uh, uh, did that. So um, in collaboration, we looked at that the trend and we found out that the area in red is area that when, uh, with the increase in, in, in the current climatic change, in the current depreciation in the environment, soil organisms in that red area will always depreciate. While the area in blue is area that was modeled to found that um, with time, the soil micro it's, the soil micro and macro in that area will increase. Uh, this modeling was done even deep into the soil uh, under use um, uh, remote sensing from the United States lab and uh, she got that uh, map there down. Um, we got data from uh, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics and um, the data was transferred to um, um, SDG platform and this map was developed. This map shows the trend, the current trend of uh, soil biodiversity depreciation in Nigeria. You can see Lagos is affected, Port Harcourt is affected, Abuja is affected, all parts of Nigeria is affected. If you look at that, um, if you look at the, 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 the legend here, if you look at the legend here, from here it's affected, all of them are affected. But the, uh, the difference there is that even if all of them are affected, there is a variation in this effect. And this variation is that the places with red is a hot spot that needs to be remedied so that we can continue to have enough food to eat. Uh, projection was done at 20% um, probability level that's closer, uh, greater than or less than 20% probability level. So we found that in, 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 if with the current increase in climatic condition, with the current increase in evaporation, with the current increase in land degradation, land changes, and all sort of problems facing the African continent, this is going to happen. And if this happened, we now projected it at 50% and we found this. If that should happen, it means that uh, we will be importing everything that we eat from the nearby country or elsewhere. Um, we look into policy guidelines that can be implemented so that we can uh, bring back our soil biota, so that we can bring back our soil organism, so that we can bring back the living part of the soil. Adapt 
soil monitoring system which will provide information on undesirable terrain in soil biodiversity loss and given sufficient time this may be reversed through soil conservation uh, the drama here talked about soil con conservation Dr. Udo talked about conservation soil protection measures and sustainable land management there are things that we do on the land not this and that alone everybody needs to work what do everybody what can everybody do stop environmental pollution by proper waste disposal, reuse and recycle. Do not go and dump what you know is toxic in the waterways or anywhere else. If you cannot do dispose it yourself, call the experts to do that for you. Application of fertilizer and other soil amendment that contains carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, uh, potassium and phosphorus, since these fundamental elements are the building block of life, everything on earth, every living thing possesses that element. So apply um, uh, amendment of fertilizer materials that contains that element, apart from the normal NPK fertilizer and uh, micronutrients we know. Uh, what else can we do? Ethical uh, mineral mining and oil exploration. Use soil in accordance to its uses and policies. There are policies for soil using. I think this, uh, we, are, we are almost done with that or we have to uh, go ahead of that. So environmental conservation and adaptation to climate change. You need to conserve the environment. Don't go and bring down 30 acres, 50 acres, 100 acres when so you are not ready to plant them. So um, right use of chemicals, including agrochemicals, chemicals, uh, residuals, and impact in soil microbial life. Climatic modulation through greenhouse gas sequestration. Um, please, uh, permit me, let me talk about agrofor um, afforestation and reforestation program of the Kyoto Protocol of 2016. We can also implement that, and that will help us sequester our carbon. Conclusion, Nigerian soil health and biodiversity have been found to be threatened by contamination with chemicals, anthropogenic factors and climate change with anticipated impact of these traits being worse and leading to about 20, about uh, less, uh, greater, uh, less than or greater than 20% to 50% loss in soil functionality, which may be a societal unrest, malnutrition, death, including intensive environmental degradation. Outcome of the study concludes that Nigerian soil should be kept alive and held through activities like proper waste through pollutant management, adaptation to climate impact through climate scientific agriculture, environmental conservation, including application of organic and inorganic fertilizer for soil health and biodiversity regeneration. Nigerian soil should be used in accordance to soil policy and recommendations made by soil scientists, among other soil usage stakeholders in order to avoid rise in the already degraded, uh, de degraded, uh, degraded status of the Nigerian soil health and biodiversity. Thank you for listening. He is a professor of biogeography and environmental science and also a consultant. A biogeographer is also a soil scientist, but he studies the soil from the lens of a geographer. He has over 25 years teaching and research experience in biogeography, climate change, forest management, range land studies, drought and desertification, and environmental management. He is presently with the university, uh, with the Nasarawa State University in KP. Before moving to Nasarawa State University, Professor Ayuba was at the University of Medugri for 20 years. Professor the chairman, you will agree with me that the COP21 of all the COP of all the negotiations, COP21 was the most successful, and that is what we are working with. The whole world is working with. Professor Haruna Ayuba was a member of the negotiating team representing Nigeria and Africa in COP20 and COP21. He has been working with the Federal Ministry of Environment. 
in the development and delivery of key documents such as biennial update reports. The UN, the UNFCCC requires that time to time countries will submit reports, certain reports. And Professor Ayuba is a consultant helping us, helping our government to work and then submit these documents. We've said he also he has also been working on the report on national communications, report on climate change policy of a dear country, Nigeria's nationally determined contribution that is in terms of climate change uh, mitigation, promoting climate finance to support agriculture in Nigeria. He's also working as a consultant on eco ecosystem based adaptation. Please, the Vice Chair of uh, Council, uh, distinguished council members of uh, NIS, uh, distinguished uh, participants, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome. Uh, it's not easy to be the last speaker, especially, <laughs> especially when people are tired. I hope I can get your attention for a few minutes as, as I run through my paper. Uh, I was particularly thrilled when uh, the Vice Chair gave uh, a definition of uh, soil as the originator of life, the initiator of life. And I, if you look at Genesis 1, we are told God created us from the dust, isn't it? So um, if you are as dark as I am, you should be thank God because God used the best of soils to create. <laughs> if you are light, you are probably de deficient in some things. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. So um, I've done the protocol. It's a humbling experience for me to stand before this wonderful audience this afternoon. And I thank the Dean of Faculty of Agri who initiated the entire process. So I'm looking at assessing the factors contributing to soil biodiversity, a theoretical approach for keeping our soils healthy and alive. And I have the outline there. Uh, so uh, I know some people are scared of earthworms and all those. Uh, so viewers' discretion is advised because this is quite graphic. I uh, will go, the two speakers have made my job easy, so I'm not going to waste our time on the things that I have already discussed. We all know what soil is. Uh, our keynote speaker has spoke extensively about soil functions, and the uh, second speaker spoke about healthy soil, what makes the soil healthy. Uh, biodiversity, you know, each time we talk about biodiversity, we're thinking of those big animals, those big plants, but Quite often we, we, we neglect the essential element which is the soil biodiversity. Uh, we also concentrate on the above ground biomass, uh, but soil biodiversity has been described as a factor of life. It's the hidden world beneath us and it drives everything that we see above. So, um, being a factor of life, the keynote speaker has mentioned the various characterization and uh, you can see them from variety of life to soil aggregates and uh, quite complex indeed. In terms of the composition, um, we, we also heard from the two speakers the various composition. These are just graphic or pictorial representation of what they have given. First, you have the microbes. Uh, and then in terms of composition, we are told just one gram contains over a million microbes. And then you have the mesofauna, you have the macrofauna, uh, quite diverse communities. Um, that is just what they have already given you, so I'm just uh, running through the slides. Uh, the keynote speaker also gave us this, the chemical engineers, the biological regulators, and the ecosystem engineers playing a wonderful role in the world beneath. Uh, just one foot, depending on how, how fat your foot is, uh, if you place one foot on a healthy soil, you are actually standing on over a trillion bacteria, uh, a billion fungi, uh, about 10 million algae, and as many as 50 atoms. And they are all linked together in a very complex interaction. In terms of the knowledge, we, the keynote speakers are, and the other speakers, they've mentioned that uh, uh, the, the, the only 1% of soil micro, microorganisms have been identified. 
And that means we have a huge task to identify those 99%. And in many cases, we have very limited knowledge, very limited understanding of how this functions, um, limited and very poor understanding of the contribution of soil biodiversity. And um, especially those in arid environments, we, we don't seem to understand how they function. Very limited understanding on the vulnerability of soil uh, biodiversity to what we do to it. Uh, limited studies exist, and there's also inadequate knowledge and understanding regarding the appropriate methods to understand this. Uh, how, to, how to even standardize our tools and methodology is still a problem. Uh, in terms of the functions, I won't waste your time because uh, the two speakers have uh, discussed that. Uh, these soil microorganisms, you know, because as they say, out of sight is out of mind. And because we don't see them, and they have some otherworldly spiritual appearance, they're crawling and squirming, nature you know, render them very unattractive and we don't, we don't like to see them. Uh, but what they lack in size and beauty, they make up for what? Numbers and what? And uh, two speakers have mentioned that. So they play a very essential role for agriculture. Uh, I won't bug you with this because the two speakers have mentioned that. And uh, then of course, they have very important role to agriculture. Uh, our keynote speaker said we should feed the soil to feed the plants to feed us. So it's important we understand the chain. Uh, in terms of importance, we can't do without soil biodiversity. Uh, they help tremendously in terms of uh, human health. Uh, she talked about not just food nutrition, but um, not just food security, but nutrition secu security. And they are very essential. The soil um, web, food web, cannot be complete without this man of the underworld. Permit me to use that. Um, importance to agriculture, very wonderful. The two experts have mentioned that. Um, there's a study that was conducted that quantified the world economic benefits of soil biodiversity. And every year, in terms of which recycling, what they are doing is about $760 billion in terms of economic benefits and all the other functions that they play. So the key aspects of my paper are the factors. What are the factors? There are two critical factors, the biotic factors and the abiotic factors. And under the biotic factors, you talk about the presence or absence of vegetation, the role of man interactions across and between organisms. Uh, the abiotic factors, that is the non-living component. Uh, you talk about climate, especially temperature and soil moisture. You also have the adaptive factors, and they are all listed there. But it's important to note that while these can contribute to enhancing soil uh, biodiversity, if you flip the other side of the coin, they could also serve as negative factors. Uh, soil texture, whether it's gravel or sandy or silty or clay, will play a very important role because it can control also protection and availability of organic matter. And then they also very strongly affect the total biomass of soil earthworms. Uh, in terms of salinity, like I said, depending on the side of the coin you are looking at, um, it could be negative, it could also be positive, but there are certain microbes that will thrive well in high in salinity, there are those who will not thrive well. Uh, soil pH, uh, the second speaker uh, dwelt extensively on that, but it affects the metabolic uh, action in the soil organisms. Parent material, depending on your parents, uh, you know, if, if your parents are dark, they can't give birth to light children. And if they are light, they are not likely to give birth to uh, dark children. So parent material is very key in determining the bacterial community structure. So if you pick an arable soil or granitic outcrop, uh, of course, the soil microorganisms will not be able to thrive very well when you compare that with salt, I mean basalts, basalts that came as a result of volcanic action. 
Uh, biotic factors, there are quite a number of them. You can look at the positive ones or the negative ones. Interactions that are huge, massive interactions going on in the soil. And some of them are positive, some of them are negative. So, is it a symbiotic relationship? Is it a parasitic one? Commensal? Some just depend on others and there is nothing, they are not feeling the impact at all. So all of this will determine the quantum of microorganisms you can find in a place. Uh, presence of above ground biodiversity uh, will also affect what is happening below. So in other words, if you feed the soil, you will feed the plants and the plants will feed you. The role of man, yes, this is what we really need to do. Uh, the keyword speaker said we need to feed the soil to feed the plants, to feed us. So you can put it as a loop to remember if you won't take anything out of this place. I think that is the key message. Feed the soil, to feed the plants, and to feed us. There are threats, there are drivers of soil biodiversity loss, and uh, we've had extensive uh, lecture by Monday. Uh, so there are quite a number of them. The uh, Food and Agriculture Organization gave us some five factors there. Uh, climate change is a key factor because of all the things that are happening, temperature rising, flooding, and all the things happening. Land use change, we send heavy machineries to our soil and excavate. We have burrow pits, mining pits all over the place, all over the country. And nobody is talking about land reclamation. Things that these people can't do in their country, they just come and do it and get away with it. If invasive species, depending on the abundance, how they are proportionate, uh, they will also affect um, life beneath. Unsustainable soil management practices, all right? We just encourage our farmers. Now this local government has five tractors. If you need, just come and they come with the tractors and just go heat our soil and they just uh, excavate and do whatever they want to do. And they, we import all sorts of things, pesticides, chemicals, uh, without even extension workers are not there to even guide the farmers. So what they do, they just put NPK without any soil testing. So they just pour the thing there. And because they don't have the resources, they don't even put enough. So with climate change, rather than those fertilizer pellets melting, they actually kill the crops. FAO says that we should do some of these things, value natural food. Uh, and these are proposals for what this uh, uh, can do. So with those few thoughts of mine, let me welcome you to World Soil Day 2020. Thank you. Please, can we? Uh, engineer, ladies and gentlemen. The structure that Liz has put in place, which falls within one of our mandates, <coughs> is information sharing to land managers and land users. And this is done through trainings. We have conducted, we are just two years old, active. But then within this short period, we have organized trainings for organized for bank groups. The executives and those trainees were trained trainers. They go back and train other trainers, including extension agents. But we know the problem that the station agents have in the one to six weeks. That's a skill. We have soil fertility maps that originated between National Program for Food Security and NICE. These maps are they are approximate maps, yes. In terms of prediction, if you do ground routing, uh, 50%, you will say 50% is a, is, a, is a pass mark. 
But why not you make 70? Why don't you make 80? Nice, sir, please approach us less, you know, um, because of the interest people have in soil, I think we can work together. We do a proposal, we submit to our need. I, I know we can find, we can find some support from us. Manage our soils, if you don't understand yourself, how do you manage your soils? Has been made here. So let's take that seriously. But in, in the the soil scientists are poor. And people say, I don't want to mess up my hand. When you touch soil, your hand, you have to go and wash and wash and roll again. So why should I, and nobody's going to patronize you. So we're talking to them. And also, they were, the national assembly was happy. And the chairman of the city committee of agriculture, distinguished senator Adamu, I'm lying. So just said this scholarship thing. Are you back? No. Somebody is saying it at a very high level. So I am saying, sir, how do we do it? He said, talk to the Minister of Education. Talk to the Vice Chancellors. You're talking about agriculture being the, what is it? <laughs> the main state, the answer to everything. Agriculture starts from the soil. If you don't have people to teach from us on how to maintain it, and it's only when you are well informed that you can teach from us. Let me tell you, it's going to be a mirage. All this talking about food security, producing so much to the extent that you were exporting. Where you are neglected? Sorry. All right. Professor, um, to mobilize land dwellers and the need to keep the soil alive. Oh, yes, Dan. Yes, we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of strategies. Yes, we are willing. We are willing. Our partner in the Ministry of Agriculture is the Department of Agriculture and Lands, right? In the States, it's with the ADPs. Uh, even in the ministry, the uh, the um, agri uh, the economics agri under two years. He was my boss when we were in NPFS, and uh, we all we all saw him as a a goal getter. And also, a man who interacts both at very high level and at low level. And all the staff, all the staff at NPFS when I was there as a seed consultant, Lord Professor Chude. So I'm not surprised that within two years, he has uh, made so much progress in pushing the Institute to this level. Uh, we continue to pray for him because of the importance of soil in agriculture. My first degree at the UNN was on plant soil science. Though the second one was on seed science. But uh, I want to observe that uh, since the ADPs interface with our farmers, we know that the ADPs have problems. Uh, I was expecting some early, sorry, some other the managers of some of the ADPs or directors of extension to be in this forum since they interface with our farmers. Uh, well, he said they have been organizing 
It's so possible uh, for us to have an interface with the media, maybe print media or social media. Let's have the list of all the, the directory of, uh, of all the soil scientists that across the entire country. Uh, if we can publish them on the social, I mean, in the print media, you know, just as maybe one page or something, let people know where these soil scientists are and where they can access uh, help.